Welcome everyone. April is a month for celebrating the World Health Day, which focuses on the fundamental human right of access to quality healthcare for all. Now there's no better time to look deeper into India's urban public healthcare system to assess how much has it really improved over the last 10 years. In fact, contrary to the general opinion and widely held perception, the delivery of primary health services is much worse in urban India than in rural and tribal areas of the country, as pointed out in a report by Niti Aayog. Tarmeem Sheikh and Suresh Krishnan from the Urban Agenda team bring us this important ground report. <laughs> With the Lok Sabha elections right around the corner, how have the last 10 years changed the healthcare delivery for urban citizens of India? That was our quest as we set out to meet patients in and around the renowned All India Institute of Medical Sciences or AIMS and check the grassroots impact of Mohalla clinics in Delhi. We also delved into the stories of KEM and JJ hospitals, uncovering the pulse of urban health infrastructure in India's financial capital. Across both cities, the reactions and experiences were mixed. While some families shared their experiences of receiving quality treatment from well-qualified doctors at reasonable cost, others vented their frustrations on a system which is overburdened. In 5,000 जो भी चेकअप वगैरह रहता है डेट डेट पड़ता है और डेट पे आके हम पूरा चेकअप कराते हैं और ट्रीटमेंट भी अच्छे से होता है इन दिल्ली मोहल्ला क्लिनिक अ प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर सेंटर सेट अप बाय द दिल्ली स्टेट गवर्नमेंट डॉक्टर्स हाइलाइटेड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग एसेंशियल प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर नाउ पीपल हु नेवर थॉट दैट दे विल गेट अ ट्रीटमेंट डन बाय अ क्वालिफाइड डॉक्टर एंड गेट गुड मेडिसिंस दे आर आल्सो एबल टू एक्सेस दैट हेल्थ केयर हाउएवर Amidst the commendable efforts, there were several voices of utter frustration. Overcrowded hospitals and overwhelmed staff were recurring complaints. Patients in waiting and their families were pitched in tents or temporary shelters outside the hospitals. I admitted my brother in the Ames Hospital because he is uh, presently uh, suffering from leukemia. The treatment cost is so high that the poor people can't do that. इलाज से तो संतुष्ट हूँ डॉक्टर जो है अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं अपना मगर यहाँ जो दवा है वो सर नहीं मिल रही है। Delays in treatments due to pending approvals under Ayushman Bharat, a scheme for universal health coverage brought in by the BJP government, remain a concern. इधर भगा रहे उधर सही मतलब कोई पता रहा भी नहीं है कि ये रिपोर्ट किधर जाके करना है खून किधर निकालना है बोलना चाहिए ना। डॉक्टर लोग बहुत अच्छे हैं हॉस्पिटल भी बहुत अच्छा है डॉक्टर लोग का कुछ ये नहीं लेकिन वार्ड बाय कैसे ठीक से बताते नहीं भाई यहाँ नहीं वहाँ जाए यहाँ नहीं यही प्रॉब्लम है दूसरा दूसरा कुछ नहीं तो हॉस्पिटल बहुत अच्छा है इलाज बहुत अच्छा हुआ था यहाँ पे एड्रेसिंग द शॉर्टेज ऑफ डॉक्टर्स एंड इम्प्रूविंग हॉस्पिटल फैसिलिटीज एंड नंबर ऑफ हॉस्पिटल्स रिमेन्स अ क्रूशियल टास्क फॉर द नेक्स्ट इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट National Urban Health Mission, Ayushman Bharat for Universal Health Coverage and Hospitalization attempts to strengthen primary health centers, 16 new aims like hospital, hospitals. Much has been brought in since 2014, yet the gaps in urban health care continue to be stark. Why is that? Let's ask our two experts with us. Let's welcome Professor Indrani Gupta, Head Health Policy Research Unit, Institute of Economic Growth, Delhi. Also with us, Dr. Nirupam Madan, Medical Superintendent, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Thank you so much to both of you for joining this very important discussion. Nirupam, uh, you know, we interviewed so many people outside AIMS and most of them were deeply appreciative of the doctors, the support staff and the cutting edge facilities. But everyone had just one thing to say. It's a long way to get that treatment. What do you think as the administrator of India's leading cutting-edge public hospital, what are the biggest challenges of public health systems today? The biggest challenge, if you ask me, is a demand-supply mismatch. 
aims delhi can only cater to so many people we need more beds we need more good hospitals more tertiary care institutes and more preventive primary care centers mm -hmm. that is the focus should be you know i'm looking at the numbers and saying okay so two third number uh, two third of all Uh, large hospital care beds are in urban centers but then aims and other large hospitals public hospitals in cities aren't really catering just to the urban population isn't it they are actually a, they have a large catchment area of, of interiors as well yes you see aims are referral centers they are tertiary care hospitals and they they should get cases which other hospitals cannot treat mm -hmm. where they don't have facilities we should be the ones the go to people we should not be the primary care givers we right. should patients with cough and cold need something closer to their homes that they can go to and immediately get relief rather than having to stay stand in a queue in a huge center mm. so what you're saying is that first of all make sure that people who need primary care do not even come to institutions like aims and the second point that i'm hearing you make very vehemently is that it's a huge demand supply mismatch professor indrani you've heard these two statements we know that the system is overwhelmed my question is this was recognized by niti aayog there was a national urban uh, health policy which was formulated how have things not improved why is the demand supply mismatch so wide even today thanks manisha uh, i think partly the reason is an overall uh, i would say neglect of the health sector generally uh, which is for rural and urban but comparatively the national rural health mission which is now of course under the nhm has been much more successful in in kind of revamping the way rural health systems are set up and that's very good but the national urban health mission uh, which was supposed to take off uh, you know uh, as early as 2008 it was delayed this kind of delay and and uh, you know revising their own implementation plans just shows that there is a lot of confusion about urban how urban health should actually be dealt with and partly the reason is that unlike rural areas which is much more homogeneous there is a lot of homogeneity in rural areas urban areas are actually very very heterogeneous urban health has not been easy to uh, actually deal with precisely because urban has not been easy to deal with and it it goes beyond the health sector so for many other things as well maybe for education for other poverty eradication you have the similar problems as multiple city of authorities uh, there are definition definitional issues all of that has kind of prevented a smooth uh, you know policy focus on uh, urban health i okay. mean that's that's part of the main reason i think yes okay so very important point made that you know it's not a homogeneous structure it's so much easier to deliver primary health in rural areas than it is in urban health and therefore one probably a big reason in terms of why it slipped through the cracks uh, i'm going to come to you doctor again and dr nirupam and ask you one very basic question you know i have some data of ayushman bharat now this is the largest public health insurance scheme rolled out in the world and there was a lot of excitement around it rightly so there are beneficiaries also who've turned around and said it's a it's a great coverage and they really do feel empowered and secure once they have that ayushman bharat card in their hand however you know when they go to a hospital uh, the just the approval of the procedures and the surgeries etc is taking very very long is that happening at aims are there certain you know red tapes that you wish as an hospital administrator you didn't have to worry about uh, when it came to giving that coverage uh so uh, that's a very relevant question we do not really face a lot of hardship in getting approvals okay what happens is there are two things i would like to stress here approvals come from the state to which the beneficiary belongs they do not come from within the hospital we have a very robust system for raising estimates and awaiting approvals sometimes we encounter problems with a few states but for the majority of the states it flows smoothly but what i really wish i could change was 
I wish Delhi was on board as well because the local people here cannot avail the service because Delhi is not part of the ABPMJ scheme. Professor Indrani, coming back to you, in the Ayushman Bharat coverage as well, if I look at it, the southern states have done so well, right? The number, the population is much lower than the northern states, but the beneficiaries are half of Ayushman Bharat funds have been claimed by five states and these are the southern states. So it is that south-north divide here as well. Have you looked at that scheme as well and seen, you know, what do we do to make it work better going forward? Well, I think part of the reason why there's a north-south divide is the southern states have always had better governance, uh, even in the health systems. So even prior to adopting PMJ, uh, ABPMJ, they were uh, not doing badly. If you look at the statistics of IMR and uh, the five mortality rates, etc., from the southern states, they've always done better than the rest of the country or rest of the states. So, uh, partly the so you have layered a new scheme on on functional uh, governance structures. So it is not surprising that uh, the new revamped scheme is doing better in the southern states. Uh, there is also a higher treatment-seeking behavior in the southern states. People are more educated, they seek care. Kerala is one example, Tamil Nadu is the other one, there people do go for care uh, because they, uh, they know that they need to do that. So that's part of the reason uh, why that's happening. I just want to say one thing, because you're talking about urban health really. Um, so the PM, ABPMJ is a secondary tertiary, mostly tertiary uh, care uh, health coverage program we are hoping uh, for a long time that there would be enough funding for even the health and wellness centers so that uh, what dr nirpam was just mentioning that you really need to have a good referral system but you can have a good referral system if you have all the parts of a health system functioning well mm -hmm. so if you just have a health coverage scheme for hospitalization but do not revamp the lower rungs of the health system then it's not going to work very well and there will be an overflow to tertiary centers that like it has happened in in aims and people from outside of delhi are also coming who should be responsible professor indrani you've raised a very important point right and the urban agenda basically deals with who should be responsible for delivering these services uh, whether well, it's so in primary health care, who should be responsible? Is it the so state look, government? Because that, clearly it's not happening through the state government uniformly across the country. It's both. It's state government, it's a central government, as well as if you could give the local bodies some funds and some administrative responsibilities, it would be the local bodies as well. The whole idea of uh, the 74th uh, you know, finance, uh, uh, constitutional amendment was to give the local bodies some, uh, urban local bodies some more uh, attraction. That hasn't really happened over the years. They don't have funds, they can't spend, because you know, you're closest to the communities. So uh, the local bodies need to have a lot more rested in them uh, to deliver a comprehensive package of care. Mm. But having said that, yes, the state government as well as the central, because there are a lot of programs that are the central government programs, and there are a lot of programs that the state governments are running. So both the central and the states have to work together to address urban health. And I'll just say one more point, and then I'll stop here, is that you know, the jurisdiction of these various urban, uh, uh, you know, bodies uh, fall under uh, different uh, departments, etc. So there is a need to have multi-sect a multi-sectoral approach. Now, water, sanitation, hygiene, these are things that directly influence uh, the health outcomes, especially in the slum areas. So the urban poor, uh, they have been around for a long time and the, the, the gaps between the urban poor and the rural poor actually uh, is narrowing. You know, the rural poor are doing better than the urban poor. Mm. All right, we stay with us. I think uh, delivery also starts with how much money are you actually uh, allocating to health and if I take just the centre, then I think it's about 1.3% of GDP, which uh, gets committed in the budgets, and then it's been kind of stagnant for a few years. If I take centre and state, then the number crosses 2% of GDP, but yet that number is much smaller. If you look at the size of India, the population, compared to even other developing countries. So I'm going to talk about budgets, which really need to be allocated, because we are going to have a new government in place soon. And I think the voice has to carry that money and resources are also key for urban health. Stay with us.
to the World Health Organization or WHO, 55 million people fall into poverty or deeper into poverty every year due to extremely high expenditures on health. And in India, a few years ago, the Central Health Minister admitted that 75 lakh families slip below the poverty line annually due to rising cost of health care. Uh, Dr. Nirupam, you spoke about the fact that, look, it's a demand supply problem, right? And we are a growing country. 50% of India's population is going to live in cities. We've announced 16 new aims, but unfortunately, other than the top six or seven, the rest are not even fully functional. Tell me, if you were given a simple question, how much more money and resources would you need? Not just money and resources, but doctors and everything else. Give me your wish list. If at present we have about 2.1% of the budget I, from the government, I would expect at least 5%. And with special, for you know, when we talk of urban health, Madam made a point about intersectoral coordination and uh, lack of homogeneity. There is a lot of heterogeneity in the urban areas. I would go for a targeted approach mm -hmm. to understand the problems of the communities which have come up and then customize your approach. That would need some amount of research and then a very focused implementation. It could succeed, but it would lead a lot, need a lot of inputs. Now, when you ask me in terms of doctors for urban health, we've got urban health centers. We've got urban health centers on paper in metros, which advocate that every CHC in the urban area should have 100 beds. Do we have them? We need resources to activate them. Right. We need resources to activate our health and wellness centers in urban areas. Hmm. And we talk of urban areas and when we talk of intersectoral coordination, it is not just water and sanitation. They are extremely important. They are the foundation for any healthy community. Absolutely. But then we also have to talk about air and pollution. It's got to do a lot with wellness, not just treatment of illness. And for wellness, it is not only the health sector which needs adequate budget, it is also other sectors with which we have to join hands. They also have to put in some budget into making, creating this infrastructure for a healthy community. Right. Which means that urban India just needs a lot more money on all fronts. <laughs> Professor Indrani, you are an economist uh, now with a focus on health. But, but this, is, this is a catch-22 situation, isn't it? I mean, the votes are in rural areas, but the taxes are going from urban areas. The attention to urban areas has always been subpar in literally all sectors, including health. You tell me three things that you'd like to see from the new government when it comes to health care. So before I do that, I mean, you know, there is a point I want to make. India spends about 1.3 percent of its GDP on health, which has been stuck at that level or it's slightly lower for a very long time. Even the three COVID years didn't see an increase in the total health budget. Now, my point is that even rural areas, what Dr. Nirupam was mentioning, if you look at the rural health statistics of the government of India, we are woefully inadequate in terms of personnel, infrastructure, nurses, pharmacists, all of that. So both rural and urban areas are uh, showing a lot of supply gaps that need to be uh, bridged. On top of that, you also are running a huge program, the ABPMJ on one hand and wellness centers on the other hand, etc. You cannot do with this amount of uh, financing. And urban health is therefore a victim of this as well because because of all the reasons I said in the beginning, urban health gets very little of gets the neglected. Hmm. Right. So at this point, whichever government, I mean, you know, hopefully the new government will come and speak at least double, you know, the national health policy in research, 2.5% of GDP. So let us at least do that. In fact, it should be at least 5%, but I, I don't see that happening from 1.3. You can't go to 5, but you certainly can go to 2.5 or 3. And But that's not enough. If you are going to be only focusing, I mean, also focusing on urban health, then you mm. need a planning body that's only for urban health. And I think with the enhanced funding, if there is a body that can do urban health planning separately, uh, how you do it, how the centre, state and local bodies work together, that, those are details. But there has to be some urban uh, health planning. Uh, body looking body at it specifically. That, that does that All separately. Right.
Okay, so, so I'm, I'm still long. a little confused because we've uh, cited two numbers in terms of what healthcare spends have been. Economic services that budgetary spends have been 2.1%, but Professor Indrani was saying 1.3%. One, uh, 1 so maybe it's a difference of center or center plus state. Professor Indrani Gupta, Dr. Nirupam Madan, both of you have that wish list that we should get at least budgetary allocations of 5% of the GDP. All that I'm hoping for is that in the next 10 years, we move up, move the needle up from 2 to 2.5% to that 5%. After all, our cities do need a lot more attention than they're getting right now, especially in healthcare systems. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.